This week we're revisiting one of my favourite cars of all time and I'm going to tell you why. It's the Peugeot 508 GT. Now I once described the front of this car as having lights like a jewel box and they do look like little jewels. Down below the lights here become indicators. The grille is a waterfall and the 508 is stylized up here on top. There's a 1.6 litre four-cylinder engine. It's turbocharged and has 165 kilowatts and 300 newton meters and there's a fabulous eight-speed automatic transmission. The side profile shows up these fabulous 19-inch wheels. They fill the wheel arch and I think that's what a car should do. It should look like everything was designed to be together. The mirrors, they fold out with the key in your pocket once the door's unlocked. The doors have no window frames and that's the same at the back. So when this window is down, this little bit just sticks up by itself. The rear window has this little bit of carbon fibre effect. And around the back, this looks pretty evil. With the ignition off like it is now, it's all black. But you can see there's a complex arrangement of lights. And as long as the key's in your pocket, you can swipe the boot and it opens. Now it may look like a sedan, but it's in fact a fastback, so a hatchback car. Inside, there is a ton of space. There's a couple of speakers, obviously, and a 12 volt outlet and underneath the rear floor, a space saver spare. And the seats go down 60-40, and there's a ski hatch in the middle. One of the interesting quirks on this car, the hard parcel shelf that's physically attached here under the hatch, and it's attached by these little knobby things. So when you put them back in, ah, with some difficulty, Yep, this is not going well. I'm gonna, no. I'm just, there we go. Well, that was an effort. You can control the automatic foot operated bit here, as well as closing it here. And from the outside, if you don't have a key in your pocket, there's an open button just under this black trim, plus a lock button so that you can close it and lock it from here without having to schlep around to the side. Getting into the back seat is a bit of an effort, I'm not gonna lie. The roof is really low. So you do have to go down considerably, making sure you get your head in. Once you're inside, you can see how much space I've got. There's very little headroom because the seats are a little bit higher. But oddly, you can see that the roof goes up slightly in front of the driver and the passenger. The back seats are pretty snug. With the armrest pulled down, it's kind of touching my sides. With the front seat set for me though, down as low as it is, there's very little room under the seat for my feet and my knees are touching the back. So I'd have to ask the driver to put the seat up a bit and forward. Ah. The front seat is much nicer, as it is in most cars except for a full-on limousine. The front seat is where most people want to be. Here along the side, there's a place for a massage and for you to save some seat positions with the power operated adjustment. There's a focal sound system and some more of that neat carbon fiber effect. But I really want to point out the digital dash. With the door closed, you can see that this particular view has a minimum of information on it. It's just what I need for my journey. It's got the automated steering, the parking brake and so forth. Down here when I'm driving is where the speed is displayed. Over here, this is another quirk of this car that I really love. There's a row of piano keys and a row of touch keys, including ones for seat heating, and you can turn the air conditioning system off completely just by hitting a single button. There's also a button to turn the wretched stop start off. Here is a problem that I had when I got into this car, and this is one of its quirks, one of its many quirks. Here is CarPlay. I've got my phone plugged into CarPlay, as you see. The funny thing is that there's two USBs concealed here under the main console. Now, you've got to get down on your knees to actually get underneath. You can't easily plug stuff in here. And when I first got in the car, this is the only USB that I saw. That one, interestingly, will stream your music through the USB connection. The other one streams your music 
through CarPlay. I mean, why not just put them through one like every other manufacturer in the world does? Whenever I've had trouble connecting CarPlay in the past, it's always been because I've got the wrong bloody USB plugged in. The rest of the console is absolutely delicious. Stop start button, drive modes. Now this does actually control the dampers as well, so you can have them set harder for sporty handling. The pistol grip gear selector. And this is the button for the semi-automated parking. There's an electric parking brake and a power outlet. Some double cup holders and a split armrest and console bin. But it's the seating in this car that I really want you to pay attention to. It is this kind of quilted leather in a hexagonal pattern. And as a cue to final comfort, this section of the cushion will come forward with a little handle just underneath. You have to be careful when you start this. You've got to make sure you press and hold the start button or it does nothing. Vision is pretty good considering how fairly limited the view is through the windows because they're quite small. And now that we're in nano mode, I think I'm going to put it into comfort. It makes the steering all nice and light. And remember, this car's in the mid 60s ish on the road. And that's a lot of enchiladas. That 1.6 really does do its job extremely well. The 0 to 100 time is about 8.5 seconds, so it's by no means a rocket, but nor is it a slouch. And to be honest with you, I would be very happy, very happy to take this on a very long trip. While I've got some time free, I'm going to choose stretch. And I'm getting a little cat's paw massage on my back and bum. Now imagine doing that on a long trip. I'm just going to go back and stretch back. It would be remiss of me not to point out the eye cockpit. And the eye cockpit is this entire setup. A tiny steering wheel with a flat bottom and a virtually flat top over which you look at the instruments instead of looking at your instruments through the steering wheel. Well, I've gotten used to it. I don't love it, but I am used to it. This feels a little bit like a cross between an F1 car and a go-kart. It's fun. This is a fairly noisy bit of concrete freeway. And so I'm set up now basically as I would be if I was doing a little road trip. So, with this rather complicated setup down by the steering wheel for cruise control, I'm going to press. So I've activated my cruise control and I've got it set. Now, if I change speed zones, I just have to tap the memory button twice and the car will go up or down to whatever that speed is. But at this speed, the active lane control you can see down here on the dash, it's sensing everything around me and it's keeping me pretty much in the centre of the lane. And I can feel it moving under my touch. Now, interestingly, at 110, the 8-speed automatic is actually in 8th. It doesn't use any of those top gears until you're actually doing 100 um, kilometres an hour or more. I'm so much set up for my road trip that I've even got a sandwich purchased from a garage and a coffee. This is exactly what you'd be doing on a road trip. Mm. It's actually not bad. I bought it just to demo. I bought it as a prop and I'm hungry. Oh, very nice. Now the cabin is really reasonably quiet at 100. Pardon me, at 110. I could, if I want, have my CarPlay telling me where to go. And as I've demonstrated before, you can use CarPlay without touching a button. You just say, hey Siri, what's the time? It's 3.59pm. Now you can also use that same control to select music, play music, make a phone call. More particularly, you can use it to handle texts. And the other thing is, there's a little bit of wind noise here around the window. Not so much that it would disturb me, because I'm so impressed with the car, that it really wouldn't make any difference. I'm just gonna pop this now down into comfort. There we go. I don't know if you can see from the camera at the back, but there's lines on the road, but there's also lines of, of bitumen joining. 
and the cruise control thinks that they're white lines, so it tries to follow them. Not so much of a problem here because the lines are roughly following the right white lines, but further down the road, they're veering like this and the control is, okay, here's a spot. And I can feel the steering wheel trying to move under my hands to steer me that way. It's getting confused between the line and the bitumen join. That's all this week for Peugeot 508 GT Fastback. There's also a station wagon. Both are absolutely beautiful. But as always, if you've enjoyed the film, hit like, leave a comment, and just there to subscribe.